So I teach at the University of Prince Edward Island, so I came with my preparations here also. And I've also been involved with the AIRS project and initiated it and like to think that this event today has really come out of that. So the celebration of the singing voice that we've been privileged to hear tonight so well demonstrates singing as both powerful communication and an art form of extraordinary subtlety, flexibility, and fascination. Singing is significant at every stage of the lifespan, from the lullabies for infants, and we heard summertime, I think that's really a lullaby, uh, to the chants and hymns, and we just had wonderful chants, the hymns and songs of reminiscence when we actually die, and we won't be there to hear, hear those, but uh, still, it goes on to the end of our lives. We're reminded of the impact of singing. Some of us have seen the news, and some knew the wonderful songs of Gordon Downey of the Tragically Hip, who really got the whole country involved with his singing and his songs. We've heard tonight how singing falls into the mandates and complements the mandates of so many organizations that aim to improve the welfare of society. Though we think of music, we think of singing as music, it is a human behavior under the control of the brain. It's a very complex human behavior. And therefore, it falls into the discipline of psychology. But singing also links with many other fields, for example, education, where the focus is teaching singing and using teaching to, to teach other things. The AIRS project was an initiative to engage researchers from many different disciplines so as to learn more about singing. AIRS, as you heard from Corinne Hendrick and Eldershaw, stands for Advancing Interdisciplinary Research in Singing. And this project was based at UPEI and involved many people in Prince Edward Island but it also involved people right across Canada and in more than a dozen countries around the world. And it was generously funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council for seven years. With the objective of benefiting society through research and singing, Ayers aimed to understand how singing develops in every human being, at every age, in every culture. It aimed to determine how should singing be taught and used to teach other things. And it aimed to determine how singing could increase well-being where we broadly defined it in terms of improved cross-cultural and intergenerational understanding as well as health benefits. And the many studies and findings that came out of the Ares Project will actually be published in a three-volume book series, a series that's going to come out in about a year, in, in 2019. We have to wait for it. It's in progress. But I'd like to share with you three broad outcomes of the whole project that seem relevant tonight. And the first is that the benefits of learning to master the human voice are no less than the benefits of learning to master another instrument that we can see outside us. And as each of us carries around this musical instrument, as Mark Sanderford has told us, it does seem a shame that we shouldn't make use of that beautiful instrument inside. And how can we do this but through the school systems, through our homes, and through our communities? That's one thing that's come out of the AIRS project. A second outcome came from some studies of the singer-songwriter and what motivated someone to go into that profession. And from our studies of interviews and surveys, we learned how important family influence is in the support and participation in the career 
In this career choice for singer-songwriters in Prince Edward Island and elsewhere, often small communities. And this finding suggests that we should acknowledge and encourage music in families, singing in families. Singing together in the car and in kitchen parties is more special than we might realize. And the third outcome of the Ares Project is the building of community among the organizations in PEI that were part of the Ares Project from the beginning or joined us later. And the idea of SingFest was discussed at our meetings. The years of dialogue that we had about how singing impacted each of these organizations in a unique way led to the realization of the importance of encouraging all of the province of Prince Edward Island to think about singing at least once a year. And we chose that time to coincide with World Singing Day, which is in a few days. So we have a whole week looking to this. So many partners have offered support and cooperation. To name a few, the Prince Edward Island Symphony with the conductor Mark Shapiro kicked off SingFest last Sunday by having the symphony audience sing the theme of the afternoon's Beethoven Symphony. We heard from Roseanne Gauthier and her team of the public library system in PEI engaging Stu uh, children and families in singing for the sake of literacy and to enjoy their experience in the library. The extraordinary work of the teachers of singing in the public school system tonight, represented by Christy Back. Music PEI, under the direction of Rob Oakley, has recognized the role of singing to the mu music industry, and now we have the annual song conference as just one example. Culture PEI, through CEO Mark Sandiford, recognizes singing as providing opportunities for employment in the cultural sector. The Alzheimer's Society of PEI, through the director Corinne Hendrick and Eldersai, has instituted and promoted singing for persons with dementia. And she's also provided the space for many of our meetings, our organizational meetings for SingFest. Young at Heart Musical Theatre for Seniors has enabled studies with our students. And Playing with Choir this week opened its doors to the public. However, all of this organization took place, discussions took place, putting SingFest together. But as the months of organizing went forward, two individuals played the key role in making SingFest a reality, and I'd like to call up Kate Thompson and Destiny Best. They took SingFest under their wing, using all of their skills and creativity and talent, and they actually also used their sisters, Alex Thompson and Faith, who is responsible for this, and uh, Faith, who's our wonderful MC, to make SingFest a reality. So we have a little gift <laughs> for, for them, <laughs> for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Kate is a, a brilliant alumna of both music and psychology programs at UPEI, and she's done much more, but we won't, won't go into it now. And Destiny Best is an outstanding vocalist uh, who is a student at the Holland College SOPA program. So thank you so much for all that you've done to make this happen, and there's more this week also. Um, and let me say, you just mentioned Holland College, so we could not have had this evening without the generous support of Holland College in enabling us to use this wonderful hall, the Florence Simmons Performance Hall, and all the technology and organization that they put into this. So we're most grateful to Holland College and the School of Performing Arts, SOPA. 
And now, of course, we can't, uh, we can't forget the performers uh, who have so generously donated their time and talents to this event. And we thank Faith Best for being this wonderful MC and the mistress of ceremonies to whom I now return uh, the microphone to.